What lessons have apple and wheat farmers learned from the 2018 droughts in the Western Cape? Dr. Simone Tron did her thesis on this topic and today we chat to her about it. Daarna gesels ons met Nico Brink van Yara oor al hooggehalte producte reek specifiek gefokus op pasgemaakte oplossings vir producente. Maar ons kop af met die nies. Ilanco, we are driven by our vision of food and companionship enriching life. En vandag sy nies Org Lindekie van Nelspreid is verlede week as Pumalanga landbouse jongboer van die jaar aangewees. Org boer tussen Kaapse Hoop en Nelspreid in die richting van Baberton. Hy is een macadamia producent en bedrijf ook een macadamia kwekerij. Hy sal Pumalanga verteenwoordig wanneer die nationale wenner van die Toyota ASA Agri SA jongboer van die jaarkompetitie later van jaar aangewees word. And South Africa's 2022 vintage will wow consumers with exceptional quality wines. However, a smaller grape crop than in 2021 is expected. This is according to the annual South African Wine Harvest Report. The 2022 wine grape crop is estimated at 1,378,737 tons, according to an estimate of the According to an estimate of the South African Wine Industry Information and Systems, it is 5,5% smaller than the 2021 crop, but still bigger than the five-year average. Wine production for 2022 is expected to amount 1,072,4 million litres. En die nie RWS aanweiser was gedurende die afgelopen wolfveiling basis onveranderd gelaat tegen 165,16 rand per kilogram, terwijl die RWS aanweiser ook basis onveranderd tegen 185,56 rand per kilogram gesluit het. Die mark het positief in Amerikaanse dollar terme gesluit. Heinrich Victor, brei nou hier weer uit. Weer rand het 2.5% sterker verhandeld in die VSA dollar en ook 0.7% gewend in die euro oor een stem in die tijd van die vorige veiling. Nou daar is in totaal 7.642 bale aangebied waarvan 85.8% verkoop is. Die aanbieding het hoofdzakelijk bestaan uit medium lengte wol met 61% daarvan fijner as 20 mikron. En 52.4% van die marine wol aanbieding het bestaan uit volhoubaar gecertificeerde wol. Nou, Standard Wool SA het op hierdie veiling die grootste hoeveelheid bale gekoop, gevolgd door Modiano SA, Tianyu SA en Lemprier SA. En so is die Henrik Victor van OVK en dit is dan ook vandag sy nies. And now for our discussion with Dr. Simone Tron on the drought, 2018 drought in the Western Cape. Simone, elaborate briefly on your study. Uh, so my study, I think everyone has heard about the, um, the drought that happened in the Western Cape between 2015 and 2018. Um, it was widely publicized both locally and internationally. But I think um, most of the focus was actually on the city of Cape Town. So with this study, I really wanted to understand what were the impacts on the agricultural areas and how did the farmers respond? Um, and this was particularly interesting because, you know, with climate change, we we're expecting an increase in drought frequency in the region as well as drought intensity. So we were, I was hoping that the lessons, some of the lessons that we learned during the drought um, could be extended into how we plan for, for climate change. Uh, so I, I, I focused on two production regions um, or production systems. I focused on apples and wheat. This is just to compare rain-fed and irrigated agriculture. And I looked at the four production regions um, across the Western Cape for these two commodities, uh, just to see because impacts obviously vary spatially. So that means planning will have to vary spatially and, and responses also vary. So just to kind of understand um, how these all worked. 
So how did you compile these results? So um, my thesis was actually not a traditional thesis format. Um, or I had five different results chapters, which means that each of the results chapters stand on their own as an independent study and can actually be read on its own. But they all combined to create a narrative for the entire thesis. So the first chapter basically just set the scene. It just um, tried to understand how severe was the drought, how did it vary spatially across the region. The second chapter um, looked at how the, the farmers respond to the drought and how were they impacted by the drought. The third chapter was a bit of a spin-off from the first, second chapter where um, we looked at how can we improve drought forecasting in the region. And then the fourth chapter um, considered since we know farmers need to adapt, what kind of adaptation strategies and scenarios could play out? So could we look at um, prospective or retrospective adaptation and um, transformative versus incremental adaptations? And, and then the final chapter just looked at what kind of barriers to adaptation um, will arise uh, with a specific focus on urban agricultural water use and the competition between urban and agriculture um, water use and how this might pose barriers to adaptation for farmers in the future. How severe has the drought been the past 30 years? So um, the region experiences recurrent droughts. Um, some parts of the winter rainfall region of the Western Cape experiences up to 10 drought conditions, 10, 10 drought events over the last 30 years. But this one was the most severe. Um, and it was some, some areas received up to 60% less rainfall than, um, than average. Um, and this is, we believe this could be an early indication of climate change, the effects of climate change on the region. Share some results or key factors from your study with us. So I think there was um, a lot of interesting results from the study, uh, but I, I kind of summarized it into five main results. The first is that, um, as I mentioned, drought is recurrent in this region. Um, and the second is that farmers are already experiencing um, the effects of climate change, or well, most of them say they're really experiencing it. Um, I also found that weather forecasts and climate forecasts are important to build resilience for farmers, and um, that the farmers in the Western Cape have a, have a high autonomous adaptive capacity, which basically means they are able to draw on the resources available to them to respond to, to, um, to impacts um, such as drought. And um, then it's also important to improve multiple capitals when we're trying to respond to, um, to events such as droughts. So this means, um, I think a lot of people, when you think about how should we respond to droughts, um, think about you know, water, um, natural capital such as water and rainfall, or um, even physical capital such as improving dams and infrastructure. But what I found with this drought was that um, improving human capital and social capital um, was instrumental in making sure that um, the farmers didn't experience as severe impacts as, as they could have. Um, they were, had access to knowledge and to expert consultants who were able to advise them on how to, um, what crop management strategies they should do, how to use the water that they had available to them, how to market their products that they got the best profit. And this was all, was able to, uh, be facilitated through social capital, through having access to information, having access to, to, um, to these consultants. So I think um, when we think about climate change and how we should respond to climate change, uh, we should be looking at, at the full picture and not just um, the natural side or physical, but we should be looking at how can we improve human, human and social capital. So um, improving education and, uh, yeah, and information networks, those kind of things. And what feedback did you get from the farmers? So, um, so I got actually lots of feedback from farmers. It was uh, they were incredibly informative and helpful, and they um, they were some some interviews lasted over two hours uh, where we had like a cup of coffee and chatted, and um, so it was incredible. Um, but also, unfortunately, it happened during COVID, so uh, there were some limiting factors. Um, but I think for me, what was most interesting is. Uh, what, how did farmers access information when it comes to climate change and weather? And where do they get this information? How do they use it? And, and how do, do they trust the information? Um, because it's very important that um, not just to warn farmers about events such as drought, but also to give them information on how they can plan for drought and, and respond to it. Um, but it's also very important is how the risk of climate change and drought also um, plays into or ranks in the overall risks that farmers face, because obviously they face a lot of risks and some of them are a lot more 
uh, sudden and day-to-day -day risks that they need to, um, to think about and to respond to. So how can we put climate change and responding to climate change within these larger risks that farmers face every day? And how can we create strategies that perhaps address multiple risks um, that, so that you know, they can uh, respond effectively to drought? Although the results suggest a daunting outlook for agriculture in the Western Cape, how have farmers adapted? So farmers adapted um, mostly doing crop management strategies, um, adopting or expanding their conservation agriculture, um, or using water, water management strategies, so um, drip irrigation or, or um, precision irrigation, um, as well as cultivar selection. Uh, but some farmers actually had to resort to a lot more extreme measures, so completely removing some orchards or vineyards. Um, some farmers had to not plant for a season, um, and some farmers even abandoned uh, their farms entirely or, or sold their farms. Um, so most of these strategies that they implemented during the drought were, were we found were short-term coping mechanisms rather than uh, longer-term adaptation strategies. And so it is important to, to try and make a shift away from, from these short-term things into more long-term uh, resilience building for farmers. To conclude, any advice? So I think the base, the most of the big, I think the advice is to just look after the soils, um, protect the soil, so not tilling too much, as well as diversifying, both with inside and outside agriculture, and and then to save to to save water, to adopt water saving strategies, um, even in the good years, because you never know when a bad year is gonna gonna happen. Our thanks go to Dr. Simone Tron, and uh, we spoke to her about the drought, the 2018 drought in the Western Cape and the impact it had on our apple and wheat farmers. ABE Biotech. Fermentasi is gelijk aan prestatie. Goedemorgen, kijkers. Graan en Ulisar hebben de afgelopen week, week een zwaar getrek op de termijnmarkt voor levering in juli. Wit en geel milieprijs heeft met onderscheidelijk 3,3 en 4,6% gedaald, terwijl de koringprijs ook met 2,3% afgenomen heeft. Sonneblom is 0,4% goedkoper week op week, terwijl de sojaboonprijs met 2,9% gedaald heeft. De olieprijs was wel wisselvallig die week, maar week op week het die prijs met slechts 0,2% toegeneem, terwijl die rand gelukkig versterkt het in de vernaamste geld in jede 0,9% sterker in de dollar, 1,3% sterker in de pond en 0,5% sterker in de euro. Animal Nutrition is een maatschappij wat al lang gesetel is in de Zuid-Afrikaanse markt en in Afrika. Ons is op hierdie stadium al oor die 65 jaar in die industrie en ons is een voorkeerverskaffer aan al die coöperaties in Zuid-Afrika. Um, ons vervaardig een hoog kwaliteit fosfate in Umbok en Twini, Amazon Tauti. En dan is ons ook een leierverskaffer van voergraad Irium in Afrika en dan vervaardig ons een gesproei droogte Malasse Calorie 3000. En dan het ons een reeks van somerlekke van PS6 en P12 wat je met jou uh, concentraten zelf kan mengen of je kan in die PS6 vorm koop wat, wat klaargemeng is. En dan het is ook oorgangslekke wat, wat reeds klaargemeng is en dat uh, um, is een 17% proteïne en zit samen met een 6% fosfaat. En dan met ons productreeks het ons, uh, die skip ons die geleerd het om een lekke zelf te mengen. Uh, en wat je van je materialen kan gebruiken wat jij zelf beschikbaar eet of kan produceren op je plaats. En dan kan ons voor jou bij dit aanpas en uh, dan het ons ons hoofd voeding kunnen gaan in het auto wat altijd voor klanten beschikbaar is wat het voor hulle kan doen. Um, ons het bykie ander, uh, ons, ons het ander producten zoals ammonium sulfaat en ammonium chloride en koeksora ook. Ons gebruik koeksora hoofdzakelijk als een buffer in ons voerkral randsoene. En soos ek vir gesê het, ja, ons is een leier verskaffer en ons is een voorkeer verskaffer by alle coöperaties. So wat Zuid-Afrika betreft uh, behoort ons product by alle coöperaties beschikbaar te wees. Wat Jara uniek maakt is dat ons wat ons MCP betreft vir jou 
certificate of analysis kan geven wat voor je beschikbaar is per vraag wat ons voor jou uitstuur. Um, ons, voor, ons moet ook vol, uh, omdat onze Europese maatschappij is in ons hoofdkantoren en hoor wie is, moet ons met ons producten aan Europese standaarden voldoen. So dit, um, dit skep jou die verzekering dat onze altijd een hoog kwaliteit product sal hee. En so, sê, wat het uniek maak van ons is, de vooral wat die lekker in die veevoere betreft, is dat ons die formulaties vir jou kan doen, wat jy wel kan, soveel as moeilijk kan gebruik van dit, wat jy self kan produceer. En, uh, ja, dit skep voor die ouwens die geleentheid, vooral met die hoer ou materiaalkostes waar daar nou is verstaan, om kostontlerings te gaan doen en te gaan kyk wat vir jou meer koste effectief is. Um, ons skep baie waarsgeleerde in Zuid-Afrika, wel ons hoofdkantoor, uh, in, 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 Oslo, in, in Oslo is, is ons fabriek die ou, die ou kind of fabriek in Umbok in Twini, of in nabij aan Durban. So ons is een plaaslijke verskaffer wat van Zuid-Afrikaanse fosfors hier gebruik kan maak, verstaan, wat um, ook van een baie hoog kwaliteit is, maar soos jy sê, ons kan een baie hoog kwaliteit product self vervaardig, wat ons vir jou certificate of analysis kan gee per product wat jy koop. Ja, so ons het, ons het verteenwoordigers recht dier die land, vir wat Zuid-Afrika betreft, verstaan so, uh, jy kan altyd maar net op Facebook of op die, of op die webwerf gaan kyk waar die contactnummers is, en ons is maar, um, ons is bekend by die meeste van die coöperatiebestuurder, so uh, klanten kan altyd na een coöperatiebestuurder toe gaan en vir hom gevra, wie is die verteenwoordiger in die area, en uh, hulle kan hom nader en hulle sal, sal, sal besoeken van hulle ontvang. BKB, die betrouwbare tuiste van landbouw. BKB, the trusted home of agriculture. Goeie morgen, welkom terug by Plaas TV. Ek is Jan de Villeer van Plaas Media en hiermee breng vir die opkomende veilings wat voorleid. Ons koop die weekse veilingskalender op die 8 juni met Proveld ons Marasse productie veiling af, wat dier Noordkap levende hawe by die Vrijburg Skougronde in die Noordwest aangebied sal word. Teens Visser sal afsla, as, afslaar op die dag optree. Dan op die 11e juni hou Molepo Il de France hulle 16e productieveiling. Hierdie veiling word hier ook ter Noordkap levende hawe by die boereplaas vakantie word aangebied, ook met Teens Visser as afslaar op die dag. Die aanwoord op die veiling sluit 45 stoet en kudde ramme, 60 stoet ooie en 150 commerciële vrouwelijke dieren in. Dan hou die SA Breivert genootskap hulle 85e nationale veiling op die 15 juni by de Boering in Davo. Die aanbod op die veiling sluit 20 stoetbille en 100 vrouwelijke dieren in. Hierdie veiling word dier OVK aangebied met PM Zwart as afslaar op die dag. Dan op die 16 juni hou bon Rino Boerderij hulle 19 Bons Mara productie veiling op die plaas Wolvekop buiten de Wetsdorp. Die aanbod op die veiling sluit 30 SP 3 jaar oude Bons Mara bille 200 pons Mara commerciële drachtige vrouwelijke dieren en 25 stoetkoeie in. En Teens Visser is afslaar op die dag. Ons sluit aan die weekskalender ook op die 16 juni met Bristow Bons Mara's sy 50ste productieveiling af. Hierdie veiling word hier Vleicentraal Bosveld in Bandelierskop in die Limpopo provincie aangebied met Michael Lassie as afslaar op die dag. Die aanwoord op die veiling sluit 30 geregistreerde bille as ook 100 vrouwelijke dieren in. En dit is al van my kante vir die week, tot volgende week weer. Tot ziens.